Hi, everyone. Uh, I've written this, so I'm mostly going to be reading it. Uh, my mother was a middle child of 10. She moved to Vancouver Island from Dauphin, Manitoba in 1941 with my sister Margaret and myself when I was 14 months old. Our father had joined the army in Winnipeg before I was born and was sent overseas. We first lived at the foot of Verdier Avenue in Brentwood Bay. My grandparents had retired to the island shortly before. They came from Dauphin when my grandfather retired from the CN. With them were my two uncles, Bob and Alan, who were still living at home. Aunt and uncles, Francis and Ernie Lee, and Irene and Leonard Winterburn had preceded them. The Lees ran the small grocery store at the foot of Verdier by the Mill Bay Ferry Terminal and lived at the corner of Verdier and the West Saanich Road in a lovely old house which faced the West Saanich Road, but you entered from Verdier. It had two or three acres. There was a hazelnut farm across the road. <clears throat> Uncle Ernie was a fishing guide and also ran a barber shop from home. Later on, and for many years, my Aunt Frances worked in the office at Butchart Gardens. Uncle Ernie became a building inspector for Central Saanich, later a realtor. I often stayed with them. They had two sons, Bob and Barry. We spent time on the wharves, Gilbert's boathouse, swam and played on the beach. <clears throat> Excuse me. My grandparents... Herbie and Je Jesse Amos, Herbert and Jesse Amos first rented the Anderson House on the East Saanich Road, later to become the Pat Bay Highway. They then purchased the Bainbridge Smith House on Halliburton Road. At the time, it consisted of 17 acres. When I was two, we moved from Brentwood to live with them. There was lots to do on the acreage, and my grandfather wanted my mother's help. They had lots of fruit trees and a large garden. There was a fruit grower's shed at the foot of Helleburton where the fruit was taken. He also had a horse for plowing. The Second World War was on and my two uncles, Bob and Alan, had joined the Navy, so were not available to help. He eventually sold off 12 of the acres, which were subdivided. Reenie Heal and her husband bought one of the lots. The remaining five acres and house they later sold to the Winterburns when they purchased the house at 5259 Pat Bay Highway. We moved there with them as well. In September 1944, my mother, Verna Graham, received a telegram notifying her of our father's death in Italy. He was born in Scotland. He, his mother, and sister immigrated to Canada when he was 12. His father, a Scottish policeman, had died in the 1918 flu epidemic. In 1945, Mum married again to John Devane, at which time we bought the Anderson Cottage, three doors away from my grandparents, and the house they had rented when first moving to Victoria. Later, the elder Mrs. Polson, mother of 13, purchased it from us. Her daughter, May, and her children, Mary and Connie, lived there with her. We attended school by bus, first the old Royal Oak School for grades one and two, then the new Cordova Bay School for four years, then back again to the new Royal Oak Junior Senior High School for grade seven. My sister Margaret also went to Mount Newton for one year before the school was built. We knew all our immediate neighbors. Our houses were on the east side facing Elk Lake. Our next door neighbors were the Mathers, their children Jack and Ann, later the Davises uh, lived there. The Mathers had built a new house on the other side of us. Barbara Heal and my Uncle Bob Amos married. I don't remember what church, but we children were invited to the reception, which was held at the Royal Oak Women's Institute Hall in Royal Oak. They built a new house next door to my grandparents. The Valens, with their children, Joan and Virginia, purchased it from them when my aunt and uncle, with my cousins Kathy and Leonard, moved to San Diego. On the other side of Mathers was the Polly Blanks. Some of you will remember Connie Conway. Her father's second marriage was to Nita Polly Blank, just up uh, Crova Bay Road Hill where Pat and Mary Bosher and the McIntyres. The McIntyres were co-owners co of the McIntyre and Harding gravel pit, pit, which later became Trio. One day, Pat, Mary, and Joyce McIntyre arrived at our house with adult clothing they used for dressing up. We all donned the long dresses and went swimming in the lake from the wharf across the road from the Polyblanks, and it was only April. 
Mrs. Polly Bank made bread and sold it from her roadside stand. On at least one occasion, we helped ourselves to a loaf and fed the ducks at the lake. It was, it was many years later, um, and I was growing up before I told my mother. The Brotherstons, Joyce, Gay, and Irene, lived on Del Monte Avenue. Their father, Pete Brotherston, owned and operated Van Owl Molding. Their mother, Hazel, was one of the Polsons. Other Polson families went to school we went to school with lived on Claremont, Sayward, and the Pat Bay Highway. Also two Swift families and at least two Fish families. I remember the Don Fish family, but I think it was his, maybe his grandparents that lived closer to us in the lake. Um, the Spencers and Tuckies were on Santa Clara, the Laytons and Clelands on Wesley Road, the Goddards and Kellos on Halliburton. Another memory is of Jack and myself, Jack Mather and myself, playing with matches in the dry grassy field next to where my aunt and uncle were building their house. We were four or five years old. The carpenters working on the house got after us and we put out the fire, or so we thought. In the middle of the night, Jack's parents came knocking on our door. One of them had got up in the night and spotted the flames and had put them out. Lucky for us that the new house didn't catch fire. During the time that we were still living with my grandparents, there was an artist living with Mrs. Anderson, and she had Jack Mather and I sit separately for a portrait which she painted in oils. When mine was done, she asked my mother for $25, which was a lot of money in those days. I still have the picture. <clears throat> When we lived in the cottage, we had a swing hung from a large fir tree. A row of them lined the north side of our property. Margaret was great at climbing these or a large cherry tree on our backyard. I would follow her, but then couldn't get down without her coaching me. The joys of having a younger sister. Another time we were visiting friends on the old West Saanich Road, unbeknownst to our parents, we children had both rear car doors of our terraplane car open and made a game of running through them. The car had running boards, and I managed to trip and dislocated my elbow. I was seven and spent the whole summer in a plaster cast. No swimming in the lake that summer. Mum took me to the city on the Vancouver Island Coach Line bus to see a doctor, who then sent us to the Royal Jubilee Hospital, where my arm was reset and the cast put on. I was hospitalized for three days. We had traveled by streetcar from downtown to the hospital, and this is the only time I remember riding on a streetcar in Victoria. When I was seven, we purchased a small farm consisting of four and a half acres on the west side of the Pat Bay Highway and south of Elk Lake. We were the fourth house from the Black Swan. The Armstrongs had a house on the half acre next door. Mr. Armstrong was a fireman. Later, the Fagans, having moved from Port Renfrew, purchased it. My sister Margaret was always crazy about horses. Walter Polson, a bachelor who lived on Del Monte and one of the 13 children belonging to the Polson family, had three horses that he used for plowing. We and many others, with his permission and when they weren't being worked, were allowed to ride them. One day I was riding bareback at the Eagles Park at the south end of Elk Lake. The horse turned too quickly and I slid off, landing on my back. From then on I was always a bit nervous around horses. Linda Fagan also rode them. One day she was knocked off by a tree branch <clears throat> and broke her arm. She and my sister built rafts, which we pulled on Elk Lake at the back of our property, where there is a narrow stretch of lake joining Beaver and Elk Lake. There are some small islands. My sister had names for them. One was Floating Island because the roots of the trees could be seen before the, below the water. Another she called Goose Island, as that is where the Canada geese laid most of their eggs. The rafts didn't always float too well and traveled a bit below the water surface. You were best barefoot, but there were also crayfish to worry about. The same with wading in the muddy bottom around the lily pads. When we were very young, according to my mother, we took swimming lessons at the Crystal Gardens in Victoria. I only remember swimming at the Crystal in later years. It seemed as though we had always known how to swim. Every summer back then, fresh sand was dumped at the Black Swan and Hampsterley beaches. 
There were still upright poles in the water from where there had been a fenced-in area for wildlife. It was a feat to be able to swim out to the first pole. Later on, we had a raft to swim to as well. People fished in the lake. I remember going out with my cousin George Winterburn in his boat. Just remember the ugly-looking catfish, although there were probably trout as well. Because we had less than five acres, we did not qualify for the farm tax. My mother grew pre peas, green peas, that we sold to the veterans' plant box, which at that time was downtown on Fort Street, later moving just past Roy Oak off the West Sanitz Road. This paid our property taxes. We had Rhode Island red chickens, and my stepfather sold most of the eggs at the post office on Government Street, where he worked. Having grown up with brown eggs, that is what I still buy. We had a freezer, which had been an, an old ice cream cooler, and not only picked but shelled the peas for the freezer. Also froze corn we had grown. We had a milk cow, sometimes a calf, pigs, chickens, and turkeys. When I was 12, I worked for my grandfather, helping him to dig the trenches for his prize gladiolas, which he sold at a stand on the road. I also picked fruit for them, raspberries, blackberries, loganberries, and tree fruits. They had quince, figs, pears, apples, peaches, and a large walnut tree. My grandmother pickled some of the walnuts. Her cellars and cellar and ours, I am sure, and, and I am sure most of the neighbors were always well stocked with homemade jams, jellies, canned fruits, and pickles. We didn't have a piano, so I rode my bike to my grandmother's parents to, to practice. I took piano lessons from Mrs. Mellish at her Heather Bell Kennels on the West Sandwich Road at Royal Oak. She bred Scottish terriers. I remember her and her husband square danced aboard a float in the Victoria Day Parade. They had no children but lots of dogs. Some of this is repetition because I know there's other people that took lessons from her as well. My grandmother, who was a long way off in the kitchen from where I practiced, had an ear for music and would cheerfully let me know when I had played a wrong note. I was, it was after practicing that I would go out and help my grandfather in the garden. I have always planted a vegetable garden every place we have lived. Other places that we picked berries were at the Kellos on Halliburton Road, cherries at the Tuckies on Santa Clara, and the berries off Sayward Road. During the summer when I was 14, I worked for the Jorgensons at the Toby Jug on Hampsterley Road. In the morning, I helped with their two children doing household chores. In the afternoon, waited tables in the dining room serving Devonshire cream tea. I learned how to make the Devonshire cream as well as bake the biscuits. Another place I worked was at the Black Swan Concession on the beach serving confections and renting out kayaks. There were no supermarkets. We had two small grocery stores on Hampsterley Road, one of them the Cunninghams. They had a service station as well. There were butcher shops and freezer lockers that you could rent. On trips to town, there was still the five and dime stores like Woolworth's and Kresge's. Milk and bread could be delivered to the door. A highlight each year was the Sanderson Fair. My mother entered her canning, knitting, sewing, homegrown vegetables, etc., and it is pretty much as it is today. Mr. Stanlake had a business on the East Sandwich Road. One summer, he brought us a TV to try out the reception on our side of the Crow Bay Ridge. This was probably 1954. On Halloween, we went out in a group most years, and one year some of the boys decided to tip over mailboxes. Also, firecrackers were legal back then, and a, I remember a boy at school being badly burned. Another memory is of going to Mrs. McIntosh's, who lived near the church on Hampsterley. She made taffy that you had to pull. The winters seemed to be colder with more snow. We slayed on the hills and skated on the ponds, often walking a fair distance to do so. With its bog, was one of them, and not overgrown with trees as it is now. Donna Grexton lived at Cordova Bay. Her father was the foreman at Maddox Farm. He sometimes drove us to the Martindale Valley off Hunt, the Hunt Road to skate on the ponds in the fields. A field also froze over on Helleburton. Uh, my mother had told me about a prank they had played on people when she was young. Linda Fagan and I decided to try it. 
We tied some strong string to an old purse and placed it on the highway. We then hid in the bushes, holding onto the line. Ronnie Crocker came along in his car, stopped, got out, and attempted to pick up the purse, at which time we yanked the string. He realized what we were up to, was furious, and pelted us with stones, luckily not hitting us, and then angrily he drove off. When I told my mum, she was horrified at what we had done, especially her having given us the idea. We had brownies and guides in Cordova Bay, which we walked over the ridge to, cutting through the two green properties. Harold Green kept cows. One time the whole herd bolted for the barn, scaring all of us into running to scramble over the fence, except for my sister Margaret, who did the right thing by walking slowly and staying calm. She always seemed to have a way with animals. In 1964, she moved to the island of Maui in Hawaii and has chickens, peacocks, and two horses still. Our first Sunday school was held at Minnie Beverage's home on Alderley Road. She was a single lady <clears throat> and owned a hat shop in downtown Victoria. I recall that Pat Bosher later worked for her. Is that right, Pat? No. no? no. It was another hat shop. Okay, that's wrong. <laughs> um, Shirley Robinson had complained that there was nowhere to go to school, go to Sunday school, and this is when it was started. She also had sun, Sunday school camp on her property. Later, the church by the lake was built, first just the basement. Later, when the upper floor was being built, the church service was held in the big room at my grandparents' home. 5259 Pat Bay Highway. This house was at one time owned by a musician. He added on this very large high ceilinged room. He also had a neighborhood lending library. There were shelves for books partly lining two sides of the room. High up at one end of the room there were three mounted animals, a deer, elk, animal heads I should say, a deer, elk and a moose. This same room is where my husband and I had our wedding reception following our marriage at the church by the lake. Once the church was built, we attended girl guides there and no longer had to travel over the ridge to Cordova Bay. During our teenage years, the racket club was built on Sutcliffe Road in Cordova Bay. We played basketball there and competed against other teams in the Victoria area. We also played softball in the field at the foot of Halliburton, where it is now CRD Parkland. We again competed against other teams in the areas around Victoria. Fred Polson and his sons Ronnie and Malcolm were our coaches. There was a boys team as well. I know my cousin Bob Lee played with a team in Brentwood. My mother and some of the other ladies belonged to a Red Cross group. They took turns hosting at each other's homes, wrapping bandages and knitting socks. We children got to know their families as well. On the other side of Fagans were the Minter family with eight children. They had moved from Wainwright, Alberta uh, when I was in grade one or two. They had a chicken farm with white laying hens and sold eggs from home where they had regular customers coming to their door. They also had a large orchard and pigs, like us kids, had chores to do. There were chickens to feed and eggs to collect, also inside chores. Our house was quite small, so in the summertime, my sister Margaret and myself slept outside in a rectangular good-sized tent, which was erected on a wooden flooring platform. On one or two occasions, I remember raiding the Minter's orchards. They had some really good apples varieties, which we didn't have. Also, it was fun as long as we didn't get caught. I don't remember minding any of the chores and have great memories of growing up in the country with lots of freedom that most of the children today don't have. In high school, all the houses under three miles from school were refused busing. We were, we were beyond the three miles, but it was decided that all the homes south of the lake had to find their own transportation. One day in protest, a huge group of us decided to walk, taking our time going in one entrance to Beaver Lake and out the other. We were late for school. I don't remember getting any punishment, but neither did we get the bus reinstated. <laughs> Sometimes fellow students, 
parents picked us up, sometimes strangers. It was a worry for our parents. My stepfather passed away in the fall of 1955. The following spring, we sold the farm and moved into town. Mom was to manage an apartment block just down the street from our new home. I was in grade 10, and following the Easter break, I attended Vic High School. Margaret was already enrolled at Sprott Shaw in town and taking a secretarial course. Later on, all the properties south of Eagles Park at Elk Lake and Halliburton Road were bought up by the CRD for parkland. The houses were either sold or relocated. The Eagles Park is still there and is, and is where the rowing club is located. I belong to the Cordova Bay Hikers, and in June we hold our annual picnic there. Previously, we held it at Beaver Lake Park. The second year we were married, Ron and I moved back to Elk Lake to live with my grandmother. My grandfather had passed away the year before we were married, and the family were worried about her on her own. The highway was busy by then. She had to cross it to get her mail. She also didn't drive. It was nice being back at the lake, and my grandmother was a lovely lady to be around. We both worked full-time. I worked shift work at the telephone office. I was a telephone operator. Um, my husband was in the military. Nevertheless, we were able to help her with chores and shopping. We paid the utilities and groceries and were still able to save enough money to buy our first home. Two years later, when we moved into our, our home, my grandmother sold the house and property to my aunt and uncle Francis and Ernie Lee and moved into a basement suite at my mother's on Narvae's Crescent in Gordon Head. Francis and Ernie subdivided the three acres, but the home and probably half an acre still remain there today as the Elk Lake Lodge, and I believe it is a bed and breakfast. Also, the uh, Winterburn House, or the Halliburton House, it was uh, once all those properties, that, that big property was subdivided, the home was moved onto a new foundation on Wesley Road is where it is now, but the the main part of the house is still there, just with a new basement. Oh, and an added garage. I have a picture of it. A few more memories of Royal Oak School. With no bathroom in the smaller schoolhouse and having to put on our, we had to put on our boots and walk to the bathroom in the basement of the larger building, which was often flooded. I don't know if anybody else remembers that. I don't know how often that happened. <laughs> the only bus driver I remember was Mr. Proctor and that he and then he married one of our one of our, married our grade one or two teacher which may have been Miss Oldhaver clay modeling in the basement of one of the one room schoolhouse banging the teeter totters and getting scolded by Mrs. Welch getting hit above the eye by a baseball bat while waiting my turn at bat and then I've got a few pictures of the Halliburton House and the uh, oh, and the Heel House. I found a picture of the Heel House. I guess it's the one that's at the edge of the cemetery, or you know, because they used to own the or one of the owners of the cemetery property. And I brought along a picture of George Winterburn's home that he built out in Central Saanich. That's it. Anybody else got any other memories or questions? I was wondering, did the term the black swan, which a lot of us associate with Eagle Park, was that, did that stand just from the concession? No, they had the grocery, it was a grocery store and restaurant. But originally there was a black swan in the lake. Yes. And, and yeah. a white one. Oh. It was brought down, this is the reclamation, it was brought down, it was an Air Force hut in Sydney. Oh, was it? It was brought down by Bill Stuthers. Oh, yeah. And his wife. Yeah, he's a babysitter. I still remember going by my parents' old store and garage. Oh, man, I don't remember the company in Sydney. Uh, they moved all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but I, what I, the comment I want to make is that your recollection is incredible. I was really impressed with what you remembered. Great job. My, My mother, mother had the same memory. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you didn't miss a thing. And, and, and Margaret also has that. 
Good memory. Yeah, that's great. That's good. That's great. Uh, where I was mentioned, I, uh, you have a better memory than me. You don't remember that fire, I know. <laughs> I don't remember playing with matches. And um, my youngest son, when he was about the same age and we were living in Trenton, Ontario, he did the same thing with a neighborhood boy. And there it was a vault, only it was too big of a fire. It just, I saw a little trail of smoke and the next thing I knew, we had an, an acre there and, the, and we had sumac bushes and it just went up like crazy. So uh, we had the volunteer fire department come and put that out. You, you mentioned the toffee floor. Was, Yes, I had never that. known anyone else to do that, so I guess no, that... she, well, she did candy apples, she did everything. She had a great root cellar. I was telling my wife a couple of weeks ago she wanted to build a root cellar, and I said, well, if you could only see Mrs. Mack's root cellar. You remember her husband was injured in the war, and he had all the tools he had, especially because he lost his finger and part of his hand. I don't remember that. See, you have a good memory. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, what you didn't mention was the Brewster family up on Alderley. You remember that? Mainly the name the, sounds familiar. Okay. They had a daughter who was quite severely challenged, Hazel Brewster. Jack remembers her. Oh, family. yes, I remember her. Yeah. Well, uh, when I, I tell us in the video I did, uh, when I was born and in the, my crib at a very young week old or something, um, Shirley Robinson wanted to come out and see me because I was a baby. And then the same day Hazel came in, and caused a little bit of a riot, and she looked at me in the crib and says, "He looks just like the postman." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Which oh. at that point, my mother fainted, and my dad looked. At me. <laughs> Speaking of the postman, that was the Robbins, Mr. Robbins. Yeah, Robbins yeah. He worked for Scott and Pete. Downtown, okay. and Scott and Pete were on the corner. And their kids went to school with us too. Yeah. In fact, Judy. June. Her name was June. June. She babysat for us. I mean. June. Okay. There's a whole bunch of them. But you... Yeah. Okay. Bill Robbins was, a, was June's brother, who I knew of. Yeah, I remember him too. Yeah. You can't remember, remember all the names. No, it's really tough. But you know, okay. what I was just going to say is that as you're going through your story, it starts to kindle a little, little memory. Right. You know, oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, oh yeah. And as Jack just said, I, no, I talked all about that until you brought it up. And it's kind of like that. But if you get that little kick, you let it write it down. Don't leave it out because you'll never find That's it. That's right. <laughs> it just goes away. Heather, were you related to Eddie Winterburn? Nope. Okay. There was uh, George, Audrey, and Bruce. Uh, Audrey Bruce was the eldest. Audrey, George, and Bruce. I have a picture of them, too. George used to go, he, was, he worked for C-SPAN, and I forget what it was, I think. Um, she was a great machinist. Yeah, he was a, a marine engineer. And he, he, didn't do, he, he went to South America. Oh, yeah. One, I have some uh, picture here, him and Bruce, and they brought back reptiles for... Yes, uh, Essel, or ocelots. Well, he brought back an ocelot too, but you know, I'm sure I used to have an article on that, but I couldn't find it. And he brought an ocelot into the black salon. I was down there uh, with three or four people, and one of them was Sam Jordan. He, the Jordan family um, were welders and burners at the doctor in BMD. And Sam was a great character. He always was so into it, and it was a, a beautiful animal. George had it on the counter. Well, later it was at Corolla Bay. Big at Maddox. It was in a cage. At, at, I don't know what. Well, he brought more than one in. I, I, I don't know. But he, would, he was trying. Sam was trying to pet it, and, and George said, no, don't do that. <laughs> and then there was, um, they, brought, they brought a lot of these animals, and it was to the a zoo. Yeah. It's in that article, like this, Rude okay. Yards or something like that. Of the Rudy Zoo. Rudy Zoo. Yeah, Rudy Zoo. Rudy Zoo. Yeah. 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 Were you related to Murray and Verla Lee in nope. Brentwood? No. Nope. Uh, they're just Barry and Bob were my cousins. Mm -hmm. My younger, my youngest uncle, he married a Victoria girl too, from the Maxwell family. But they they had four children, but they were brought up Cadbury.
So your relation to Bobby and Barry Lee is through? Francis, Jack trying to figure out the connection. Francis, their mother, is a sister to my mom. Oh, okay, good. that's true with his husband. Oh. Yeah, and same with Irene Winterburn, who's my, one of my, my mom's sisters. Okay. There were six girls in that family and four boys. They lost the, their eldest brother died in his 20s. He had, uh, had, had rheumatic fever as a child. Okay. And died. He had one child. And well, Jack's, for instance, Jack's mother, two sisters, one was married to the Green Herald. No, Ivan. John. Ivan, John's. John. Yeah. Yeah, I knew they were cousins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lots of memories. Oh, I know. <laughs> it was great to hear it. So. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you.